Hello and welcome to my presentation about two famous and highly influential human beings who have shaped both our understanding of the ancient and of the modern world. The first of these famous men is a philosopher born in northern Greece in the year 384 BC. This man is Aristotle. At the age of 18, he joined Plato's Academy in Athens and wrote extensively about a wide and eclectic variety of subjects. His writings covered everything from biology to zoology, from the nuanced art of aesthetics to the study of philosophy. Upon the death of Plato, however, Aristotle left Athens and, at the request of Philip of Macedonia, he tutored Alexander the Great between 356 and 323 BC. Teaching the king of the Greek kingdom of Macedon had its advantages. Aristotle was given many opportunities to pursue his research due to the abundance of supplies made available for his use. Aristotle later on established a library in the Lyceum, which aided in the production of many of his hundreds of books. The fact that Aristotle was a pupil of Plato contributed to his former views of Platonism, but, following Plato's death, Aristotle immersed himself in empirical studies and shifted from Platonism to empiricism. He believed that all people's concepts and all of their knowledge was ultimately based on perception. In addition, Aristotle's views on the natural sciences represent the groundwork for not only his writings, but also for the many future men and women who have been inspired by his revolutionary achievements. The second philosopher, which I will be focusing on in my presentation, is a German intellectual, born in 1889, but most predominant throughout the 20th century. His name is Martin Heidegger. Like Aristotle, Heidegger's influence was and has been far-reaching, touching on diverse fields such as philosophy, theology, art, literature, politics, and psychotherapy. His most eminent book, Being and Time, is considered one of the most important philosophical works of the 1900s and a critical piece in the studies of existentialism and deconstruction. In it and other later writings, Martin Heidegger explored the question of being and maintained that our way of pondering the world defines our inner nature. In addition, he claimed that the contemporary Western civilization's philosophy had lost sight of the metaphysics, and the society had fallen into a world of presuppositions where the grasp of who one is and the truth about oneself becomes helplessly muddled with implicit assumptions. Despite his largely accepted philosophical views, Martin Heidegger is in fact a controversial figure. Stemming from his affiliation with Nazism prior to 1934, this German philosopher has brought criticism upon himself as he neither apologized nor expressed regret for his actions, except in private life, where he called his membership to the fascist Nazi party the biggest stupidity of his life. This controversy raises general questions about the relation between Heidegger's thoughts and his connection to National Socialism. Despite having been active many centuries apart, Aristotle and Heidegger share multiple beliefs which are vital to our understanding of philosophy today. One of Aristotle's principal works, Metaphysics, laid the foundation for Heidegger's philosophy and influenced his thinking in a very profound way. In Metaphysics, Aristotle contemplated what he calls the first philosophy, analyzing the universal principle of being and the abstract qualities of existence itself. It is here that we find a striking similarity to Heidegger's most famous piece of work, Being and Time. The perennial topic of existence in metaphysics seems to have been picked up on by Heidegger, who most notably argues that the contemporary society has lost sight of being and should therefore return to Aristotle's description of existence. To better understand Aristotle's influence on Martin Heidegger, here are the two philosophers themselves who have traveled through time to discuss their beliefs with you. Hello, and welcome. 
I hope you find our discussion interesting and that you don't get bored. Anyways, let's begin. First of all, I would like to share with you some of the principal themes of one of my books, Metaphysics. In it, not only do I reject Plato's theory of forms, but I also clear the way for my empirical approach to life. I emphasize that one must observe first and only then use the abstract reasoning to better understand the world. It is this thought process which ultimately brings us the true metaphysics, which I like to call the first philosophy. This metaphysics involves the study of the universal principle of being, the abstract qualities of existence itself. Mr. Heidegger, would you like to comment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Aristotle. It's precisely your many-fold uses of the word being which prompted me to rethink my philosophy. I began to question why Western civilization has neglected the topic of its existence just because it could be considered obvious. We have observed the world around us, philosophizing about everything from the stars to the trees, but yet we've ignored what could arguably be the key element to understanding the universe, ourselves. I discuss this topic of being more in depth in my book, Sein und Zeit. Back to you. All right. Now, let's take a quick look at two passages from Metaphysics that show my high regard for the need for observation, as well as my analysis of being. All men, by nature, desire to know. An indication of this is the delight we take in our senses. For even apart from their usefulness, they are loved for themselves, and above all others, the sense of sight. For not only with a view to action, but even when we are not going to do anything, we prefer seeing to everything else. The reason is that this, most of all the senses, makes us know and brings us to light many differences between things. But with regard to ink composites, what is being or not being, and truth or falsity? A thing of this sort is not composite, so as to be when it is compounded, and not to be if it is separated. Like that the wood is white, or that the diagonal is incommensurable, nor will truth and falsity be still present in the same way as in the previous cases. Yes, these are precisely examples of your groundbreaking philosophy. Now, to conclude our discussion today, let's take a look at an extract from Being and Time. Why are there beings at all, instead of nothing? That is the question. Presumably, it is not an arbitrary question. In fact, it must be held to be the first of all questions. Of course, it is not the first question in the chronological sense. And yet, we are each touched once, maybe even every now and then, by the concealed power of this question, without properly grasping what is happening to us. In great despair, for example, when all weight tends to dwindle away from things, and the sense of things grows dark, the question looms. German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche from the 19th century relates to this very question of being in that he deeply analyzed the problem of nihilism. According to Nietzsche, it is only when nihilism is overcome that a culture can have a true foundation upon which to thrive. He wished to hasten its coming only so that he could hasten its ultimate departure. This topic of nihilism, which Nietzsche is quoted to have called the death of God, was interpreted by Heidegger to mean the death of metaphysics. Heidegger thus concludes that metaphysics has reached its potential and that the ultimate fate and downfall of the question of being lies with its initiation. Thank you very much for listening to our presentation and we hope you have enjoyed it. Do you have anything to add? You're not very quick at answering questions, are you? I guess that's why they call me Aris Turtle. <laughs>